Who's gonna win? This guy? This guy who's probably named Greg? Or this guy? Look at this guy, why, why does he have teeth? And why aren't they pearly white? But either way, you know it's gonna be this guy who wins. And I didn't even tell you what the competition is, but you know. Unless it's a competition about who could get me too'd first. Because then you know, Greg is kinda looking like the winner when it comes to that. But then again, it's 2020 now, it's a whole new decade. Maybe robots are next. It fondled my data. I'd buy that, I'd, I'd put a hashtag up for that. But what we're gonna talk about today is how MIT built an algo that absolutely crushed human analysts when it came to predicting earnings. And there's actually a good lesson to learn from this and it might not be what you think. Definitely stay tuned. And also, if robots scare you, get this guide. It'll help you control all your emotions and it's free. That way, you know, you don't get scared and screw up in the market. There's a link to this guide down below in the description and comments, check it out. So what happened was there was a competition between this MIT built model and analyst. So the task was to predict quarterly earnings of more than 30 companies. And the MIT model outperformed the combined estimates of expert Wall Street analysts on 57% of predictions. So they really crushed them. Now the interesting part, and the part we should learn from, is the data sets that both groups used. So you may have heard of alternative data, which is a popular buzzword nowadays that really turns on ignorant investors. It's the data that comes from big data, another buzzword. So alternative data is like credit card purchases, location data from smartphones, satellite images showing how many cars are parked in a store's parking lot. And the idea is, is that you can combine all this new alternative data with the more traditional stuff like quarterly earnings, press releases, stock prices. And that way you could paint a clearer picture of what the company's actual financial health is on a daily or even weekly basis. So when this stuff first got popular a few years ago, I was like, why? If you look at a guy like Warren Buffett, he's doing the opposite of this. He's looking at very long-term things. And then these guys think they're gonna use this extremely short-term data, like foot traffic, on a daily basis to somehow help them. I'm like, no, it's, it's not gonna work. Now you might think more data is better, but in fact, that's not always the case. Really, when it comes to investing, the more simple you make it, the better off you are. And that was proven here, because this MIT model for forecasting financials, it only used two points of data. It used weekly credit card transactions and then three month earnings reports and that's it but the analysts who are competing had access to any available private or public data and other machine learning models they basically had all this alternative data and everything like you could imagine but the algo still outperformed them with only those two data points so the lesson here isn't that robots are gonna take over the lesson is that you should simplify your trading or investing process the robot won because it's simplified so you can run into a lot of problems when you're trying to invest with too much data or too many indicators on your chart, just too much stuff in your process. One problem is that the whole thing becomes tough to execute because a lot of your returns comes down to how you execute your strategy. But if your strategy is overcomplicated and you gotta do a hundred different things just to put on a position, good chance you're gonna screw it up. And you know what an overcomplicated process reminds me of? It reminds me of that game Mousetrap. Do you guys remember this game? This thing looked so fun to play on the commercials, but when you actually got it, setting it up was the most difficult thing. Like I was never able to actually play the game because I couldn't set it up. No one could set it up. Adults, children, who who was playing this game? That's what I want to know. It's too complicated with too many pieces and that's really what your process can turn into. So make sure your process is easy to execute, much unlike Mousetrap. Another issue if your trading strategy and process is too complicated is that you won't be able to know what's going on in the sense that you won't know from which part of your process the results are coming from. If you have this data point, this data point, and this chart and this and this and that, how do you know which is the actual thing that is contributing to the bottom line? Because when it comes to building a strategy, what you do is build it and then just keep cutting down. That's how you refine it. So you're only using the things that provide the most value. That's the fine tuning you do over time to your strategy to optimize it to make you more money. But if it's so convoluted that you can't do that and you don't know what's doing what, then you know, you're know you gonna fail. And this reminds me of Mongolian barbecue and all their sauces. They gave you so many sauces Mongolian that I didn't know what to put in my food. So my strategy was combine all the red stuff. Now, if someone asked me, whoa, that's really good. Like, how did you make that? I couldn't tell them. I didn't know what made it taste good. Now, first of all, no one would ever ask me that because my dish was always probably terrible to other people. I liked it, but you can't know where the results are coming from when it's so convoluted with so much going on. And this is why I prefer restaurants where the chefs put things together for me because I'm not a chef and I don't know what I'm doing. But anyway, another problem that comes from a convoluted process is that oftentimes it's not robust. And if it's not robust, that means it's prone to failure. So if there's a bunch of things going on, 
you probably don't fully understand what means what. So when you have your total process, you don't know if it's gonna survive through every type of market change. So you got a million different things all combined together for some reason works in the current market period, in this one year period. But because you don't know the fundamentals behind why it's working, you don't know if when the market changes, like if it turns to a bear market, if you'll get crushed or not. So you guys have heard me talk about momentum a lot because that's the main strategy that I use. And one thing that I really love about it is that it's robust. Momentum has been working for years, hundreds of years. It's a universal law pretty much. So I know that concept is backing up my strategy so I know it'll keep working. But if you just have a bunch of data thrown together, like what, what is the concept there? What is the true strategy that is gonna last? You're not gonna be able to figure it out. So the moral of this story of this MIT robot beating these analysts is to simplify your process. That way you know what's going on and you can improve it. And if you wanna simplify all these emotional things that you feel when you're trading, then make sure you download this guide. It's free, there's a link down below in the description and comments, just put your name and email in and I will send it to you. There's a lot of tips and tricks on how to control your emotions. Definitely check it out. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you get email notifications whenever our new videos come out. We're publishing a lot, a lot of good stuff. So subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Stay fouled out there, bye.